Okay, so we looked at form processing with Go, Golang, and uh, then we had, uh, we saw this last week, we had a file. Uh, I don't know if we need to do file, but if you do do file, you need your encoding type to be multi-part form data. So I guess we'll just visit it briefly. And uh, then you have request form file. And so what's the HTML on that? The HTML is right here. Input type file name is Q. Just the identifier that I gave that variable. And then input type submit. And then we're saying, hey, is there anything here in Q? And if so, form file returns. Uh, Multi-part file file from multi-part package and a file header and an error and uh, form file returns the first file for the provided form key um, so that's uh, we can see what the file the header and the error are We've just printed those out and then reading the file and uh, seeing the contents of the file. Do you want me to explain this in more detail? Anybody? Sid? Jeff? Uploading a file. Yeah, image, PDF. You might handle them differently when they get to the server, but you're going to say, hey, input type file, and you're going to give it an identifier that that's assigned to, and you need to have ink type multi-part form data, and then submit. And so when it comes in, we're going to see, hey, form file, and that's coming off of the request, right? So form file, this is part of the request. And then gives us a multi-part file. We can see what that is. And uh, multi-part file, type file, is an interface to access the file part of a multi-part message. Its contents may be either stored in memory or on disk. If stored on disk, the file's underlying concrete type will be an OS file. You know, we could try it with an image, see what happens. And then multi-part file header. File name, header, size, content, slice of bytes, and temp file, whatever that is. So there's a package multi-part, so we could go learn about that, go doc. And search for multi-part. My multi-part. Package multi-part implements my multi-part parsing as defined in RFC 2046. So request for comments, 2046 is part of the Internet Engineering Task Force, IETF, and so RFC 2046, Multipurpose Internet Mail Extension, MIME. -E. So we can read a little bit here. This document specifies an Internet Standards Track Protocol for the request. Uh, please, and this was like what year? November 1996. Please refer to the current edition of Internet Official Protocol Standards for standardization state and status of this protocol. Distribution of this memo is unlimited. Uh, defines a message representation protocol specifying considerable detail about US ASCII message headers, which leaves the message content or message body as flat US ASCII text. This set of documents collectively called Multipurpose Internet Mail Extension or MIME 
redefines the format of messages to allow for text messages, message bodies, and character sets other than ASCII, an extensible set of different formats for non-textual message bodies, multi-part message bodies, and textual header information and character sets other than US ASCII. So we could like see a little bit about what does that mean. And uh, there's only one reference of it that way. But there's 96 multi. So multi-part media type. That sounds pretty common syntax, handling nested messages, multi-parts, mixed subtype, alternative subtype, message media type. Image media type, audio, video media type. So, you know, it looks like that's in there. Image, we could take a look and see what they say about image. Where's image? Page 11. Take me to 11. Image, a media type of image indicates that the body contains an image. The subtype names a specific image format. So media type image. These names are not case sensitive. Um, an initial subtype is JPEG for the JPEG format using bad encoding. The list of image subtypes given here is neither exclusive nor exhausted and is expected to grow. Unrecognized subtypes of image should, at a minimum, be treated as application octet stream. Implementations may optionally elect to pass subtypes of image that they do not specifically recognize to secure robust general purpose image viewing application if such an application is available. Use of generic purpose image viewing application this way inherits the security problems of the most dangerous types supported by the application. Not sure what that means. So uh, we'll start with this, just kind of uploading a text file. And the file we are going to upload is here. A little Rumi. It's a great Rumi poem. If this makes no sense to you, you've never been crushed in your life. Probably. I don't know. Everybody has their own experience. But this totally resonated with me when I went through my crushed phase. <laughs> When my life felt like, oh wow, everything I've ever built just got destroyed in my mid-30s. Any of you ever go through that crushed phase? No? Okay. Great poem. Uh, I guess, you know, we should take a moment just to read it. Be crumbled so wildflowers will come up where you are. You have been stony for too many years. Try something different. Surrender. Kind of what it meant to me was like, don't resist, right? Like, everything's getting destroyed, but that's all right because, you know, new things will grow where there's, I don't know, but just to surrender to the entire process. Through me. All right, so uh, here we have uh, requesting the form file Q, and that returns... Uh, Multi-part type file, multi-part file. So we could go look at that in here, multi-part, my multi-part, and we have index and we have type file, and we have file header, and we have part, reader, writer, Examples, new reader, email message, header, content type, multi-part mixed. So there's something in here about, right, like emails and I don't understand all of this. And uh, so then we have type file here, reader, reader at, seeker, closer. So it's an interface. Files and interface to access the file part of multi-part messages. So it allows us to access the file part of multi-part messages. 
So it sounds like, you know, my internet wiki. Let's see what wiki says. MIME, Wikipedia, multipurpose internet mail extension, is an internet standard that extends the format of email to support text, non-text, message bodies, header information. Uh, it's uh, all emails pretty much transmitted via simple mail transfer protocol in MIME format. MIME is specified in six linked RFCs. Uh, although MIME was designed for a simple mail transfer protocol, the content types defined by MIME standards also are also of importance, such as HTTP for the World Wide Web. Servers insert the MIME header at the beginning of any web transmission. Clients use, uh, so that MIME header, I wonder, any web transmission, if that's that thing we looked at, right? Where we have... You remember the, the header we looked at? The request header and the response header? Clients uh, use this content type or media type header to select an appropriate viewer application for the type of data the header indicates. Some of these viewers are built into the web client or browser. For example, almost all browsers come with GIF and JPEG image viewers as well as the ability to handle HTML files. And then we have content type. So here we have right like the header content type text plane I was hoping that see also media type so uh, common examples text HTML image PNG so let's see what that looks like Just doing a little exploration here. So request form file gives us back the file. And that file has closer, IO closer is a interface. It has close and it returns an error. So that means we want to close whatever the file is. And file header, multi-part file header, file name header and size. There's the MIME header and an error. So request form file. And how would you have known that? Like if we went to godoc.org and looked at net HTTP and looked for a request and looked at the index. And then we have the request and we have form file <coughs> right here, form file. So when the request comes in, right, we have that request and these are the different methods we could run on the request. So we were doing in the previous example form value, which is right there. Here's form file. So we get the FH and error, and then we do the F close because we saw that the file, right, files, when you open them, you want to close them. We saw form file is that interface with the closer, and that means close. And then we print this stuff out just to see what the prints out when we print it out. And then the file, right, when we looked at that file, reader, reader at, seeker, closer. So uh, read all takes a reader and returns a slice, a byte, and an error. So we could use IOUtil read all and drop that file in, which is also a reader, implements the reader interface, also of type reader. So we get a slice of bytes and an error, check the error, and then we take that slice of bytes and turn it to a string and we get S. And if we have S, we're gonna print it out right there. So let's run it and see it in action. 
and I think we are in 05. Yeah, and 01. And uh, that file is uh, documents. It's just in source. That was a long way to go. So it opened it, and when it opened it, we also printed out here. Um, we created the variable s. We printed out the request method. So the request method was at first get, right, the first time through. And then it didn't do any of this because we didn't have any of that. And so then it just set the header and uh, and it wrote this. And then when we posted, because here for method post, the request method became post. So it printed out post right there. And then we have request method equals post. So all this runs. And, uh, and when that ran it you know, opened up that file and then printed out this. So we have the file, which is like an, an address in memory. And if we looked at form file, right, multi part file. So file, multi part file, let's just go look at that a little bit more, see if we could understand that a little bit more. Multi part file. Doesn't you know? It gave me an address, and I'd almost expect to see a pointer there. Um, if stored on disk, the file's underlying concrete concrete type will be a pointer to OS file. So there it is. Files and interface to access the file part of a multi-part message. Its contents may be either stored in memory or on disk. If stored on disk, the file's underlying concrete type will be an OS file. Pointer to an OS file. So we can look at godoc.org. I don't, I don't totally understand this. I'm just trying to figure it out a little bit with you, and maybe that will be helpful to see how I look at this. But there's type file. So, you know, I'm not sure what it is if it's stored in memory. I, I, I guess this file is stored on disk because we got an address, and then we have the header. So we ask for the header, and that's a new line there, and then header. So we got the header, and the header is uh, content type text plain, and then just a whole bunch of bytes. And then we have a uh, error, and the error is nil. And then we read this file, got a slice of bytes, converted it to a string, and then printed it out. And that came out there. So kind of interesting. I'd like to sort of see how to upload an image. I think that'd be interesting. We did content type text HTML. And maybe this is a super long rambly video. Maybe the next one we'll try to do an image.